Welcome to the Post Trauma Secrets and Decluttering channel. Today, I have the extraordinary Melanie Savage that is one of her clients that is in her journey since already nine months. So today, I really want to have a conversation with Melanie and let's look where it will go. Hi, Melanie. Hi, Valerie. How are you? I'm pretty good. You look fantastic today. Thank you. <laughs> so, Melanie, what do you think about if you go back in your memory, you know, when you joined the program? So how were you feeling at that moment? At the end of my rope, just <laughs> hanging on by my fingernails and desperate. So you were desperate. So can you describe like how much clutter you were having at that point? Because you would never have had your background open at that time. I still don't like to have my background open, but um, I entered the program on the heels of inheriting family properly, property. And along with that came a three generation horde Plus my hoard that I moved. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm a contributor too, but my things were all in moving boxes in the carport because I couldn't even get them in the house. And I just didn't know where to start. I, and we're talking about a house with a couple bedrooms. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms, living room, dining room, kitchen, bonus room off the kitchen, Stacked floor to ceiling, wall to wall with stuff. Okay. So how would, like when you arrive and you couldn't put your things in, how would you feeling? How, how was the feeling? Well, I kind of arrived in stages. Um, my first view of the house was right after I lost my brother, which was why I inherited it. And my mind wasn't on the house. Uh, I, I was just kind of in shock and grief. And yeah. I didn't really think about it. And as I spent, I spent several weeks here, you know, taking care of final arrangements and, and began to think about what am I going to do with this? And all I could think of was, there's so much stuff here, and, and I've got to get rid of it, and I've got to move my stuff, and oh, that means I'm moving here. And then my focus was, well, how do I, how do I stage this move? It was a process. It, it, it took a year, actually, for me to get moved, sell my house, and move to, to my new, new-to-me house. Um. I can't really describe it. I was in such a fog. And I second, third, fourth, and fifth guessed every decision I made, changed my mind umpteen times. Uh, almost a year later was when I joined the program because in a year I had gotten nowhere. And I was I was I was moving things around, but it was you know, move a pile here and break it into three piles and three other places. I was just shoveling stuff from point A to point B. But I I wasn't I wasn't making any progress. And I wasn't feeling like it was even a doable thing anymore. And I've forgotten exactly what it was that triggered my attention uh, to the Doers Academy program. But I went through the information and I thought to myself, okay, let, let me try this. The link between trauma and clutter. Well, God knows I've had enough trauma in my <laughs> life and this recent one hasn't helped. Yeah. 
So let me find out about this. And I made the decision to, to try the program because nothing else had helped. I certainly couldn't see any way it was going to get worse. And maybe this would make it get better. So I signed up with yeah. great trepidation, but yeah, I signed up. So you signed up with some expectation, you know, when we get into a new program, we never really know what is that program. We have an idea, we think we know, we have some hope. So what, I was, was, your, what was your goal or your hope at that point when you decide to join? I went into it pretty much open-minded because... I, like I said, I was at my wit's end. There was just nothing I could do on my own. And, you know, here are these people saying, we understand, uh, we can help you. This isn't your fault, but there is a process that you can go through to fix this. And I'm like, yeah, fix it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about results, right? Yeah. And, and you know, in the back of my mind, I was thinking, now, you know, I've worked with organizers, I've read decluttering books, I have a small library of them, and none of it helped. And your program was promising to be different, and I was just really clinging on to that. I didn't know what different meant. I, like, I, was, I was completely open-minded about it. I really was. Good. It was a little unusual for me, but that's... <laughs> That's how desperate I was. Yeah, that must have been so hard. So yeah. when you decided to join, and now that you have joined, what is your feeling of the program? When I first began, um, I had my onboarding call, and that was kind of, okay, I'm going to do a workbook. I'm going to do Zoom call. I don't know how to do Zoom calls. I'm going to do Zoom call. Uh, it, it still didn't seem concrete to me. And then I went on my first call. And I thought, I don't know how this is going to help, but I feel better. That's awesome. Well, there was, you know, on the screen and my computer screen in front of me, there were, you know, a, a whole bunch of faces of people who were, I mean, they just seemed like ordinary people. Nobody had, you know, foaming at the mouth, crazy or anything like that. They were just, they looked real normal. And they were talking about, well, I've gone through this and I'm at this step and I'm at, I thought, okay. Okay, all these people think there's something to this. Let me just hang out here. And, and, and what I basically did was I did the phone calls. And the one that really, really grabbed me was the stress relief. And as I went through call after weekly call, it was like, that's what's wrong. That's the problem. I'm out of my mind, over the moon, drowning in cortisol, stressed to the max. No wonder I can't sleep. You know, my my health is going down the tubes and I can't make a decision to save my soul. And I was working with the workbook and I was on the roadmap and I, I did a couple of posts on... Um, the log. Yeah. But the thing that I just really honed in on was the stress relief. And I began to realize just how much the stress in my brain was running and ruining my life and had been for years. Long before I thought of the clutter as a problem, long before I started hoarding yarn, 
it's my little hoarder thing. Um, I even have a little sign that says it's not hoarding if it's yarn. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> but I focused on that and and I still am in many ways. I'm still learning. Um, recent calls have focused on the link between the brain and trauma and the environment that we create as a result of that. And I'm learning so much about myself and I, not only about what got messed up, but I'm learning about the steps that I can take to change that. I'm not doomed. <laughs> Not at all. And you have put in action a lot of the things we're talking in the program. I have. Uh, I'm here to say I have tested out every single one of them. And, and the beauty of this program for me is that there is so much. Uh, all of the different, you know, weekly stress relief uh, actions. I've tried them. Some of them not, not for you. you. Not for me. No, uh, a couple of them actually ended up as triggers. But this is an individualized program, so I didn't have to deal with that if I couldn't. I could go to something else. Hydrotherapy? No, 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 no. Mandala? Oh, yeah, that works for me beautifully. Um, and the, the magical tool for me, the doer's reset followed by the affirmations. And it was wonderful because some of some of the calls that I was on, I taught me how to write my own affirmations. And I was one of these people who had, you know, had the affirmations things before and thought, oh, this is woo-woo. No. Once I had my affirmations with the help of the VJM, the <laughs> uh, it clicked into place. And yes, I, you know, morning and evening, the doers reset to, to, to just stop my mind, get off the hamster wheel. And then the affirmations to remind me who and what I am. And I'm like, I'm in a totally different frame of mind. And it's to the point now where I might say the affirmations morning and evening. But they crop up in my mind spontaneously in situations during the day. And that's the power of it. Yeah, that's beautiful. I get to internalize. I get to make this mine and I get to act on it. And it's, it's making a world of difference. It really is. So you really talk about step one and step two of the holistic decluttering journey, that the step one is reducing the stress. And then in step two, where we work on the mindset. Right. Well, that's been key for me because it's been the stress and my mindset as a result. Um, you know, I think it's basically been my whole life long. I didn't have the world's easiest growing up years, and there was a lot of the basis of my trauma was formed then and never had anything to counteract it. And and I've learned through this program that, you know, trauma is our response in the brain to the situation that we can't deal with any other way. And now I have another way to deal with it. I'm, this program isn't just changing my clutter or changing my hoarding habit. I've discontinued it. Um, it's changing my mind and it's changing my brain and I literally feel like a different person and I have a different approach to all of this stuff I mean I still have stuff I'm still cleaning out the house I still have furniture and antiques and bric-a-brac and 40 years worth of revere <laughs> Yeah, but you were able to even, I think, change the floor or things like that. Make some renovation. I've, I've actually gotten to the point where I got what I call the private wing of that wing of the house, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, and that hallway. I got that cleared out to the point where I could have new flooring put in and I could have it painted. 
And changing that environment to something that felt like mine has also had an impact on my mindset. But this program taught me that I needed to do that for myself, that I needed to create the environment that was mine. I couldn't continue to live in the house of the people who helped create my trauma. And this program gave me permission to do that. And that was big because you don't just go in and, you know, get rid of all of mama's stuff and daddy's stuff and grandma's stuff and your brother's. I've been able to do it mindfully. I've been able to really reach into myself and be honest with what these things mean, not what they should mean, but what they do mean. I've been able to be real with myself. And I've been here a little over two years now. I actually now sleep in a bedroom with a closet and, you know, chests of drawers and they're neat and my bed is made and my closet is organized and I have been able to keep that. That is beautiful. So where were you sleeping <laughs> before? Yeah, I, I was sleeping. I had a bed set up uh, amid stacks of boxes and a set of thrown up shelves stuffed full of stuff. Um, I had a bed set up in front of the set of shelves and, you know, I was camping out. <laughs> yeah. So you must be really must rested in the morning compared to before. I still have ongoing issues with sleeping through the night. I understand why I don't let that in particular stress me, but I make sure to keep track and I pay attention to myself. When, when I feel myself getting tired, I give myself permission to nap. If I only got four hours sleep at a time and I got up for two hours and I was like, oh, I'm tired again, go back to sleep. So I'm doing what I, what my body and my brain are telling me I need to do for myself, which I wasn't before. I was about, no, I should get up at this hour. I should be away. I'm not shooting on myself anymore, as one of my girlfriends says. So it's, it's, it's just, like I said, it's just made a world of difference to me and Yes, I know the huge stack of moving boxes is still in my carport. I'm still cleaning out the stuff that was in the house, but I'm not stressed about it now. I know where they are. They'll be there till I get to them. I'll get to them. And when I go through them, I will follow the same rule that I'm following now with my decluttering in the house. I learned that I couldn't just move piles from point A to point B. And I made it a rule for myself that I don't move things. I put them away and there's a difference. And in the midst of the pre-Christmas panic, I was like, oh, I got to get ready for Christmas. And I started to move things, but That's I realized what I was doing and I stopped myself. That's beautiful. Yeah, because it took all the stress out of Christmas. Okay, if I don't get the tree up, I'll live. And I won't be stressed. And I'll put on my Christmas music. And I'm invited to Christmas dinner at friends. So I'll go and I'll enjoy my friend's company and a Christmas meal. And I'll celebrate Christmas without a tree just fine. And if I do get the last of the things put away and I get the tree up, that's fine too. <laughs> I love that. I'm so, so stressed. <laughs> yeah, it's so what I hear it's now you're really living more in a mindful way. I am very much so. I'm I used to be so out of touch with my feelings. I did everything on the basis of what I thought I should do or what somebody else said I should do or what somebody else's needs were and that last thing was legitimate, but that last condition no longer exists. It's just me now. And I don't need to live my life under continuous imposition. I can make decisions and I can follow through on them. I can evaluate whether or not they work for me. If they don't, I can try something different. 
and that that's one of the gifts that that the doers academy program gave me it gave it put me back in the driver's seat in my life or maybe you put me in the driver's seat for the first time. I'm not exactly sure, but boy, I like it here. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, yeah. Give me the wheel, honey. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. You got it. It's yours. And I feel that way. And I love it. And I'm kind of, I'm looking forward to putting more things away. I am still acquiring things, but they're things like bookshelves. Um, I'm still spending money on closet organizing systems, uh, uh, cabinetry. I'm creating the space and the places for the things that I do want in my life, for the things that I value and the things that I treasure and the things that I need. Um, so it hasn't gotten less expensive, but I'm spending the money purposefully. I'm not regretting it. It's making a difference. Uh, my life has just completely changed. And I know, you know, you, you see that in advertising and infomercials. Oh, it changed my life. The Doers Academy program has absolutely changed my life. No lie. It's, it's, yeah. it's been wonderful. It still is wonderful. And after I'm done with the program, it'll still be wonderful. <laughs> I get to keep this. That's even the, more, the most marvelous thing. Yeah. It's really like you're a pure example of a credo at the business where we say you create the life you want. And I kind of, you know, I heard that. I heard that said repeatedly as I got into the program and part of me was like, yeah, okay. Oh, it's the truth. And it's not instant. And that's, you know, when people like me will go into a program like this and it's like anything, help me, help me, help me. But the, the expectation is that something will happen right away. Mm. It takes time. And it does take time. And as I went on the calls and went through the workbook and read the material, it was like, I understand why it takes time. It's absolutely necessary and totally worthwhile. I don't regret a minute of the time I've invested in this program. It's been, the payback has been incredible. <laughs> It really That's does. beautiful. And I got to thank you and JM because I don't, I don't know where I'd be without this. I really don't. And this, it's, it's been such a gift. It's, it's priceless. Oh, thank, you. thank you so much. Like, you know, when clients arrive in the program and you, you, you express it, it's going slowly at the beginning, you know, and, Everybody arrive and they're overwhelmed and it's not a change like in the first week. Oh, boom. Now I'm feeling good. <laughs> no, You know, it's progressive. But what I really, I really remember when you arrive, how overwhelmed you were. And to see and have the chance to witness that change in your life. It's such an honor for us to be able to witness that and to see that and to see the growth and wow. I understand because I will tell you, it was through the calls and it was basically the stress relief calls. Another person in the program was going from, you know, overwhelmed, PTSD, all kinds of stuff happening in her life. And I watched her her change and I still remember the day she got on the phone call and she was all of a sudden different she was smiling she was she was glowing and I said okay she did it 
it's going to happen for me too. I'm going to do this too. I could see it happening with somebody else. And it's real hard to deny evidence. It's right in front of your face. <laughs> so, so that if, if there were any reservations in my mind at that point, they were gone then. And, and I would tell anybody who's sitting on the fence about this program, sign up, reservations and all, that's okay. Just stick with it. And one day, you'll look back and you go, oh, this is different. I can do this. You know, just be patient with yourself. You'll get there. But yeah. Get started. And what we ask to people is really to spend a year with us, you know, mm -hmm. to spend a year to make that transformation. And a year seems long at the beginning. I think that's perfectly reasonable. And I'm actually thinking to myself, oh, I only have a few more months. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to miss the phone calls. I'm going to miss the tremendous outpouring of support that I get from everyone else in the program who's on those calls with me. I'm not in this alone. I haven't been in this alone. And I can't place a value on the amount of care and support and positivity that I get from everyone else who's going through this with me. It's just, there's nothing like this program. Nothing. Thank In you. Way, that's too bad because I'm sure there are a lot of other people like me who need it. <laughs> We're and there I, for them. We're there yes. for them. <laughs> God love you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That is so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that today. Oh, you're more than welcome. I'm always happy to talk to you, Valerie. You know that. <laughs> I know it. I know it. And please say hello to JM and everyone else at the, at the Do Well uh, program for me. I will, certainly. Thank you so much, Melanie. So everyone, if you want to listen to the story that Melanie was talking about, you can still look in the YouTube channel or on the podcast, their other story like the story of Eileen or Tammy or Taran that you can find in there. So have a really great day and stay tuned for another moment of inspiration that will come. Bye now. <laughs>